You're welcome back. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini, and this is Newsfile. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, as we always do and have done over the decades, we put Ghana first. This show is brought to you by the Candace Sponsorship of Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN everywhere you go, Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa, Robert and Sons Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care service provider for 31 years, Way Lead Properties, home is where one starts, and Fanat Ghana, think wood, think Fanat, looking for the best of furniture, that's where to go. Now, my guest this morning to deal with accounting on the two issues, the cathedral and the COVID-19 um, funds. Samuel Okudiatoa Blackwa, he's MP North Tongue, ranking member, Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament. Also here in the studio is Martin Pebu. He is a lawyer and rights activist. Joining us via Zoom, Dr. John Ampuntia Kuma. He's MP, Ejusu, and Deputy Minister for Finance. Kweku Enchibwe Siakon is a Ghanaian citizen. That's just how he wants to be referred to. I love that. Good morning and welcome, Kweku. Please unmute. Good morning, Samson. Can you hear me? I can hear you very clearly. Good to have you. Um, John, good morning and welcome to the show. Okay. Uh, gentlemen in the studio, welcome. Thank you. Great. Good for making time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, saw you running around the courts. Mm -hmm. Very busy, as always. Yes. Um, we are lucky. We're going to have like a, a holiday. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thursday. Yes, Thursday, the 30th of June, mm -hmm. will be the 40th anniversary yeah. of the murder of the judges. Mm -hmm. And the GBA will observe a special Martyrs Day. Uh, Martyrs Day remains significant, right? Excellent. That's the thing. Some people lost their lives because others they didn't think that they had integrity. You see, so many people died, especially those three judges. Okay, and how many? Over 30 years on, almost getting to 40, we are still battling issues of integrity. Mm. They didn't get uh, due process yeah. because some people were not happy. They just thought, oh, these judges were not straight, and they decided to finish them off. So we must thank God we have a democracy. Yes. yes where yes. you will not be abducted. Yes. Go and put at the, uh, they call it, is it Bundasi? Yeah. And yes. shot. Yes. Even without your people knowing, nobody will know. Yeah, uh, but for the rain mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> that night, yes. um, there would not have been anything to talk about, right? Yeah, that's correct. It was God who yeah. intervened. Yes. All right, so um, that's it. Now, let's get to our very first issue. Uh, the um, managers of the cathedral, National Cathedral, um, issued a seven-page statement to try and explain things and, you know, douse the fire and the angry, you know, voices about accountability or the lack of it. Last week, um, it does appear that even on the back of that, we had uh, Dr. Pukumensa, I mean, here, you know, helping to explain things. But it does appear that a lot more, you know, has had to be said even after that. So they were compelled once again to issue a three-page statement and added another three-page uh, uh, legal advice from the Attorney General. And as I mentioned to you, the Attorney General has also had cause to issue a two-page uh, strongly worded, tight statement um, about claims that he says are false and untruth of conflict of interest against him regarding his role uh, in the project by the Honorable MP here, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa. Uh, we are now hearing voices, including people in government, for once, like uh, Asamoah Boateng, saying that halt the project. Are there many such voices within the government that feel that this 
is the way to go. We have heard from the Catholic bishops who from the very start, when the president announced the idea and started to form, look for a trustee and the way to go about it, cautioned that it had to be pursued in a certain way with caution. We've heard them now say, this is no priority. Stop it. We've heard other bishops, clergy, say, stop this. Do, just don't do it. Okay. Um, there are those who are making comparisons about the amounts that will be spent. From calculations and estimates that people have done so far, including the relocation of the judges and the other entities at the place and all the buildings there, including the cost of the land and everything, you are looking at about 600 instead of the original 100 million dollars we're told about later it changed to how much and eventually later we're told it was 350 now bright simmons brings us some discovery that it is actually going to be 400 million dollars and not what we have always heard that amount start to think about what it can do for this country convert it into ghana cities we are told that if Ghana is unable to raise $1 billion by in the next two years or so, we must go to the IMF. It looks like we have the money. Legitimate? Right. So um, let's start with, uh, with Martin. Okay. Yes. Um, what do you say about the latest developments that have come on the back of the cathedral? Yes, um, I'm actually perplexed, to say the least. Uh, number one, that um, it's clear that apparently the, uh, what do you call it, based on the interview to the president of the Catholic Bishops uh, Conference, uh, Archbishop Nami, so it means that Palmer Baker is on the uh, trustee uh, committee as a result of being handpicked. So it's not that he's officially representing the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a lot of uh, assurance and comfort, at least for now I'm aware that officially my church hasn't signed on to it. Mm -hmm. Palmer Buckley is on it because he was handpicked in his personal capacity. You, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's good. So uh, we we'll entry the Catholic Bishops Conference, yes, though they are here to look at it and review and decide, they should be mindful that a lot of us are beseeching them not to sign on to it. Especially as we do the parallels, uh, there's a story about Côte d'Ivoire when Ufui Buani sought to build one. Yes, the Pope expressed concern that, look, Côte d'Ivoire, you don't even have running water. People are so poor and all that. The Pope from Rome stepped in. Of course, it helped to reduce the cost. Mm. So the Cali Bishops Conference, we entreated them. Beyond reducing the cost, I've read elsewhere that they insisted that a hospital ought to be built. Excellent. If they want the Vatican to be associated with it. Excellent. And they built a hospital for the people. Good. Of course, they didn't build it in, they didn't have to demolish anything. Excellent. They took it to a faraway place. Yeah. Right. Some people were affected though. Some yeah. people were affected. Mm -hmm. Yes. So number three, my third point is that, look, the cost of the cathedral, you know, a true grapevine, I understand some clerics are even saying they can build it for $50 million. Why is the National Cathedral Project not giving it to those clerics who say, church leaders, say they can build this cathedral for $50 million? If that can be done, why are we going now? We are in the area of $400 million. We have heard also in the grapevine some who have said yes. that they could do it for less. And they, are, they have said that they have the track record. Excellent. That if you look at the monuments they have put up mm -hmm. in the country and outside of the country yes. as one church, they are setting that they can do it for a lesser amount. Yes, and I of course, heard, of course, they were not listened to. Yes, I heard about fifty million dollars. This okay. story you are talking about that cleric saying about fifty million dollars, he can do it. So let's give that to him to do. Then number four, now the ownership. The thing about it being a, a this a guarantee company. Mm. Yes, that's a very uh, complex matter legally. So my question is that you see, if it says it's a government project, and you've set up a guarantee company. I think the state interest and uh, this, uh, uh, assets, the, the one as, as Samoa Boatin uh, heads, ought to be in. Because when it's government owned, they help to manage. 
And then also when you look at the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921, one of the responsibilities of the Minister of Finance is to manage government assets, okay? Government assets, government property, that's under section four of the Act 921. And if, of course, we know that the finance minister cannot be everywhere. So the point is that mm. if the finance minister will not be in charge of the cathedral under uh, subsection two of section five, the powers of the minister, he can delegate to somebody in the ministry. So I don't get it that they say the, they established the cathedral project as a guarantee company through the museums and monuments board. No. The law is clear that if it's government property, it's in the charge of the finance minister. And of course, we know that finance minister is one person, so he can delegate. But it says that delegate, let me uh, read the subsection two of section five. It says that the minister may delegate any of the responsibilities under subsection one to the chief, direct, chief director or to a senior public officer not below the rank of a director within the ministry, but shall not be relieved of the ultimate responsibility for the performance of the delegated responsibility. You see, so in all the things that he does, to the extent that under section four, he, he is to manage government properties. I don't see how the museums and uh, this monuments board will be left to handle this alone, no. So, and then also the issues of the uh, uh, public-private uh, law, the PPA Act. So it tells you that, look, uh, the trustees need to come back again. The Board of Trustees, they need to come back again and explain further. Explain further, because this cannot be left with the uh, museums and uh, this, uh, uh, monuments board. Because we are sinking so much money. Sam, you remember that uh, from what we've been saying so far, even the destruction of the buildings alone, what government is going to uh, in care to reinstate buildings for people is going to top over 100 million. Yes, because uh, I think last week from what uh, Honorable Okujeto put out there, yeah. even we as lawyers, we are going to benefit the Judicial Training Institute, yeah. right? Yeah. And the cost you put out is that it's going to be $50 million. That's even one of the affected uh, entities. <laughs> yeah. and the, the Judicial Training Institute, my understanding is that is going to be a completely new edifice. It will not be only the Judicial Training Institute. It will include several other things that will help okay. uh, the judiciary, which Excellent. they never had Excellent. before. We are happy and, for it. And actually, they are working to get it uh, at a location closer to the courts. Excellent. That will also be helpful. And that they have never actually had the Judicial Training Institute in a permanent okay. premises. Okay. So they are happy mm -hmm. that there's opportunity to get a new modern building Perfect. that will do more than just housing the Judicial Training Institute. Perfect, yeah. Sam. Mm. We are happy for it. Happy, happy, happy for it. Mm. But the point at this time is that the cost of the cathedral in terms of reinstating, in terms of compensating people, is going to top $100 million. So it, with all this happening, it can't be that everything is in the charge of the Museums and Monuments Board. No. And in our law, is a finance minister who has to manage him. Mm. It's, I'm not saying I'm supporting the project, mm. but because they are insisting, trying to railroad their way through, that's what I'm saying, they need to pass through there. But I'm certainly at the point of resistance, still resisting that we don't need this now. I like the way Archbishop Name put it, that look, at this <coughs> time, yes, the Catholic Bishops Conference have not yet come out with an official position, but speaking for himself, he says, look, this is not a priority. It is not a priority, yet the the government went to the Supreme Court and called this the priority of priorities. Sam, let's repeat it. When you read the uh, Bonfair case, Bonfair who took the case to the yeah. Supreme Court, mm. the Attorney General's response was that this cathedral project is the priority of priorities. Because the President has said so. And I'm baffled because as we sit here, we are doing what? The, 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 the double track. Our kids <coughs> are home. Some are now going back to school today. Okay, we are running ships. Couldn't we, if we knew we could mobilize such money, couldn't we use that money to support the GET fund so that they will build more schools quickly? Because I think we went and borrowed about 1.5 billion, mm. but I don't know how the, ma the money is not coming in quickly. So the projects are delaying. So if you can raise these millions of dollars, why wouldn't we use it for the education first? Because when you educate the mind, 
then the rest can follow through. Mm. You see? But, but when they told the court about it being priority of priorities, they also got the court to understand a certain thing. Mm -hmm. You remember at the time when Archbishop Duncan Williams, uh, uh, Professor Ezio Poku, in, 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 oh, yeah. and the rest of them, yeah saying that why are you speaking against something that your money is not going to be used yes. to build yes they, they kept saying yes it's not tax money because yes. that's what they had been told yes because that's what we had actually yes. been told by government yes. spokespersons yes. so in the court they made the court to understand this and the court says this is the supreme court yes. that's what government made it to understand we take note that the government has maintained a consistent theme mm -hmm about the unifying effects of the cathedral on, on Ghanaian Christians. So far as its contribution is to provide land for the cathedral and the actual construction to be sponsored and financed by churches. So this was how they were made to understand that the government was only providing land. The actual construction was the job of churches. Yes, that's correct. But you know, in the Supreme Court decision, there was another part where then I was left, but let's raise it and see if we can mm. bring clarity. Mm. Then subsequently, they went elsewhere to say that so far, this is what the government is. So when you say so far, then I was like, mm, let me be careful. Does that mm. mean that subsequently, this could increase? Yeah, that, that's, that's where I read. That's where I read. It says, so far, uh -huh. its contribution uh -huh. is to provide land for the cathedral and the actual construction to be sponsored and financed by the churches. Uh -huh, yes. Mm. So, so it left room. Yes, exactly. So I've been cautious because it says right. so far. So mm. I was like, well, okay, that's what they put before okay. the court. Okay. Yeah. So for you, what do you say is the way forward? Oh, simple. Look, uh, it looks like for $50 million, that can easily be provided, even some of the churches. So they should give the project to the uh, man of God who says he can do it at around 50, 000, uh, 50 million dollars. Give it to him. Let him do it. And I'm sure 50 million dollars, they can raise that quietly on their private and then leave us beyond that, the money that they are getting. Please, let's give it to get fun. Because look, when you have teenagers at home, okay, for longer periods than they should be, you know, usually under the old system, you're sure that they are in school for a certain period. This one, they are leaving home today. Some mm. of the schools, okay, this week they are going. In a month's time, they'll be back. You will incur extra costs, uh, educating them, extra classes and all that. Let's use the money to support education. Mm. The excess of the money, they should use it to support education. But this cathedral, once they've been told that it can be done at for $50 million, they should hand over the project to that man of God. Let him do it. So, I mean, education is already being supported. So that point he's making, is it here or there? Use the money to support education. Education is already being support, supported. In fact, we are having, you know, as it's told now, the best policy so far, free SHS and mass. And we, mm. have, we are paying for it at the same time. So what's the problem? Good morning, Samson. Good morning, Martin. And good morning to the other members of the panel and uh, uh, distinguished viewers and listeners across the globe. Where Martin Pebu concluded his remarks is exactly where I would like to begin, which relates to your question. We all know that even if we come to analyze education, mm -hmm. What is the quality? What are the outcomes? Look at all the things that are in arrears in the education subsector. Textbooks have not been provided for more than three years for public basic schools. The education ministry is now in a desperate, frantic effort to procure textbooks. As we speak, GetFund is owed in excess of 940 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. They one. owe so many GetFund contractors. The last time we approved their formula for 2022 in Parliament, they were pleading with us to bring pressure to bear on the finance minister to release funds to them. The finance minister says we're in a precarious situation, so they cannot help. School feeding caterers, as we speak something, they are agitating that 97 pesos, let's think about it. What can 97 pesos per child as cost of feeding do? 97 pesos. They are asking for an increment 
to three Ghana cities, just 97 to three Ghana cities. I really wonder, I mean, all of us sitting, let's be honest, will we send our children to schools where they are fed on three Ghana cities? Hot meal a day. Yet, but, government says, government says. That's just one meal. One meal. Your adults in the prisons, mm -hmm. <laughs> they are feeding on yeah, that's one city, matter. 80 yeah. persons yeah. for a whole day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's crazy if you read the U.S. Human Rights Report. Yeah. I mean, it's embarrassing. You know, but government says they cannot afford the increment the uh, school feeding caterers are asking for. So that is the state of the Ghanaian economy. I have brought here today something. The annual public debt report for the 2021 financial year. You will be shocked. The quantums of money we go and borrow is now so minuscule, so small, because of how precarious our situation is. If you look at page 73 of this report, we went to see the Indians on the 15th of January 2021 for an agriculture financing for resilient rural development project for just $15 million. That's how desperate we are. $15 million. We can afford to give David Ajay $22 million in that dubious sole sourcing contract. We go as low as $12 million from Israel. We went to beg the Israel Discount Bank on the 4th of February for $12 million. We say we'll use it for supply of armored vehicles for the Ministry of Defense. Then we approach the, the Germans, 14th April, for 13.6 million Ghana cities. I mean, can you imagine? Begin to wonder we how, to, how all these, to, how all we these countries India, use. Went to India for a 24 Yes. Uh, nine eight million dollars credit facility yes you know the, to boost our agriculture 21st may Deutsche bank we went to them for 18.3 million dollars then on the 29th of december 2021 we went to the commerce bank for 10.5 million dollars for secondary takradi water supply then we went to the uh, yeah, ing bank for just $19 million. So when you, when, when you see the amount of monies we are desperately begging for, $8 million, $12 monies, million, Money is far million. less than, far less than the, what we are throwing the, away. The design fee. Yes, far less than the design fee, what we are throwing away. Mm. You know something? I've been looking for the exact... So, so what's your point? Your point is that because we have these needs, if we, stop, if we stop pursuing the cathedral, these needs will be catered for? So, no, I was expecting that even if we will build the cathedral, even if we will build the cathedral at this time that we are in economic difficulties, we will have opted for a model which is less costly. Mm -hmm. Did God tell us exactly the coordinates, the address where we should site this cathedral? Did we have to... Did God tell did, us, did, you should did, be asking <clears throat> if he told the president, not yeah. us. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. told the president, yeah. yeah. Where we have to demolish the Mali ambassador's residence, demolish judges' bungalows, mm. demolish scholarship secretariat, Fresh demolish bungalows. the passport office, mm. demolish the judicial training institute, mm. demolish private companies, mm. commerces, mm. Waterstone Realty, an up market, you know, very fresh... Luxury apartment buildings, all of that demolished. And our conservative estimate is that it will cost us $100 million just to compensate and relocate. Have you heard the latest even on the Judicial Training Institute? SNIT has served them notice that the land, they have to pay for it. Mm. So the initial projections will even go up. Mm. Because they are saying that no, they, they are not going to offer the land for free. They will not hand it over to the judiciary for free because apparently there was a swap where the court complex is now mm. belonged to SNIT. Mm. And so they did a swap. Yes. So they are saying they will be disadvantaged. Mm. So they are asking for more money. That's oh, the latest. I, I thought rather that what I have come to understand uh, from seeking mm. information around it <clears throat> is rather that, you know, the court complex yeah. was a SNIT property. Yes. And they did a swap. But as we speak, they, they are still in talks, mm -hmm. and it looks like they are almost concluded, and SNIT is willing to actually allow for the relocation mm -hmm. to happen on the land that is still vacant within the court area, where we, we have always called the Cocoa Affairs. The Cocoa Affairs. Right. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. know that they, they no, have no. issues. No, there are issues there. There are issues there. There, there are bills that the judiciary will have to settle. 
Snit is demanding money because they are also, their books are not looking good. The last time we were analyzing their books in parliament, I mean, they are even beginning to sell some of their assets to balance their books. They, they, are, they are really in a, in a terrible shape. Then something. I have money Whether to Whether you are building a cathedral or not, these problems will be there, won't they? Look, no, no. <laughs> yeah, they this, no I disagree. Yeah. These demolitions will not have happened. Mm. This demolition, if we had opted for a greenfield project, you go to a fresh land. We've been talking about decongesting the yeah. central business district for years. You know, you, you, there, there are so many places you could have cited this. A smaller project, you know, a lot of these clergy are saying they can do it for mm -hmm. less than $50 million. Mm -hmm. You know, some are even saying far less. We could have decided to set up, establish, erect a national cathedral that would be decent, mm -hmm. that would not be so costly, would not be so destructive, mm -hmm. and we could have also come clean, mm -hmm. proceeded on a foundation of truth, righteousness, mm -hmm. holiness, purity. Yeah. All of that is missing. Something. I have money to obtain the state's case in the, the, the state's defense, I should say, mm -hmm. in the James Kwabna Bonfer case. Mm -hmm. So this is a statement of case filed for and on behalf of the defendant pursuant to the order of the court, dated 19th April 2018. Mm -hmm. This is what the Attorney General told the court at page 41. We respectfully submit that in this case too, the case of the National Cathedral, the involvement of the government is very limited in nature. The government only proposes to provide a piece of land for the construction of a National Cathedral by the different denominations. The funding for the construction and maintenance of the National Cathedral, funding and maintenance of the National Cathedral is to be provided by the Christian community and not government. And not government. It is also proposed by government that the cathedral will be available for likely secular uses, for some state funerals, thanksgiving services, etc. The Attorney General repeats this same argument at page 45 of this, his defense. Sorry, page 44, paragraph 45. Mm. My lords, as already mentioned, the National Cathedral will be constructed by different denominations in the Christian community and will serve public purposes, including national church services, annual thanksgiving, presidential services, burial services, during state funerals. The various denominations, which are expected to pool resources together, mm -hmm. expected to pool resources together to construct the cathedral, already have places of worship which were constructed without any support or aid from the state. We humbly submit that Christianity will survive with or without a national cathedral. To this extent, it cannot be reasonably contended that the state is engaged in excessive entanglement with religion. Hmm. This is what the eminent judges were told. This is the position of government. And that's what was communicated, even to the respected clergy. That is why the venerable Archbishop Duncan Williams went public that, hey, what's all this noise? We are not using your money. You know, we are going to build it ourselves. Reverend uh, 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 Kwabna Opoku Frimpong also said the same thing. So what has changed? And something, you notice that this week, I have been releasing, but, but, I have been releasing but, but more before documentation. You, before you get there, what has really changed? The initial position that it was going to be this. And then later the finance minister came and said, we will give land and seed money. Yeah. So that's where we are. Nothing has changed, right? Except that as a citizen or even unfortunately as an MP, mm -hmm. you don't know the cost. Yes. You don't know how much the state is committing to what it calls seed money. And I asked the, the executive director yeah. of the secretariat, they uh, say. I asked him if he knew the the limit of government's, you know, uh, intervention by way of seed money. It doesn't have an idea. He has no idea. Can you imagine? Even the Bible tells us that before you start a project, know the cost. Mm -hmm. And the Bible uses very strong words. Mm -hmm. You know, that is tomfoolery. Mm -hmm. You know. <clears throat> so, you see, first of all, this is the position This is of what the Bible is. says in Luke yeah, chapter, chapter 14, 14 verse yeah. uh, 28. <laughs> and to 30, I read from the Message Bible. It's an interesting yes. provision. It says that, is there anyone here who, planning to build a new house, 
doesn't first sit down and figure the cost so you will know if you can complete it if you only get the foundation laid and then run out of money you are going to look pretty foolish everyone passing by will poke fun at you he started something he couldn't finish it uh, yes go ahead yeah so you you notice that government has clearly not been truthful not been candid look if after what you've told the courts, what you've told the venerable clergy, you realize that probably you're having difficulties with fundraising, uh, what I have picked up talking to people associated with this proje project is that the fundraising has not been very you know, good. What you do is that you come clean, as the Christian Council is now demanding, mm. be transparent with the Ghanaian people, with parliament, all of us, and say that, look, uh, fundraising has not been very good. That itself should tell you a message. Mm? Should give you a certain message. What Christians are considering a priority now. Yeah. If Christians are not, there's not such an outpour. We don't see that euphoria to support this project. That itself should send you a certain message. You come clean. Let's have a national debate. Should we do this project now? Considering our current economic crisis. If we say we should do it some way. How do we do it? How do we pace ourselves? I have been putting out data of how other cathedrals elsewhere, even though not state-sponsored, how, how they pace themselves. Washington National Cathedral, which there's a lot of talk about, 82 years construction period. The Cologne Cathedral, 74 years. The St. Paul's Cathedral in London, 35 years. Notre Dame, the first phase, 25 years. Milan Cathedral, 579 years. I can go on and on. So why are we in a hurry to do ours within four years or three years with a March 2024 completion deadline? And we are breaking our backs. I mean, demolishing everything in sight to construct that. Is that the best model? So you come clean, achieve a certain buy-in. That is what a democracy is about. Then we have concrete numbers to satisfy Article 178. You allocate in the budget, then we know how much we are budgeting for. Now this project has become a moving target. Started at $100 million, according to the finance minister, then it moves to $200 million, $250, $350 million, we were told, as at even June 17. And remember that even in 2018, when they were given that dubious sole sourcing contract to Sir David Ajayi. It was the chief of staff's letter said it is $190 million. So pay him 12.5% of $190 million. At the time, the public had even been told that it will be $250 million. It's all messy. Only last week, the June 17 statement, mm. we were told it's $350 million. Thanks to Bryce Simmons's, you know, very good you know, uh, job, we're hearing now that it's $400 million. So where is this going to end? And you must add $100 million in compensation because some of them are even on their way to court. Mm -hmm. Waterstone yeah. Realty yeah. has served notice. They've written to the Attorney General mm -hmm. that they, the government has not kept its terms. On the 12th of August, 2020, they wrote to them after demolishing their, their uh, business in 2018, so that they so, are allocating yeah, we, we have gone over this. So you, the path for you going forward should be what? Immediate suspension of this project. Immediate. Then what? And then there must be full accounting. As we speak, mm -hmm. the documentation we've put out in excess of 200 million Ghana cities. Remember that that is not all. Some money has also gone to this designer out of that 200 million Ghana cities. There's a $22 million contract that we have cited. We need to know. Then you see, there are so many illegalities. If you take the public procurement law, for example, rely on section 41B and C to give that contract to Sir David Ajay. On sole sourcing. On sole sourcing. Yeah. 41B says a procurement may engage, a procurement entity may engage in single source procurement under section 41 with the approval of the board. B, where there is an urgent need for the goods, works or services, and engaging in tender proceedings, 
or any other method of procurement is impractical due to unforeseeable circumstances, giving rise to the agency which is not the result of dilatory conduct or the part of the procurement entity. C, where owing to a catastrophic event, there is an urgent need for the goods, works, or technical services, making it impractical to use other methods of procurement because of the time involved in using those methods. This cannot apply. There was no catastrophe. There was no agency, you know, for this. So we know that that whole contract is, is just, I mean, it, it, it stinks. It, it stinks. Mm -hmm. It's stenchy. It's putrefying. Mm -hmm. we, we, we cannot live with it. Then this week, I also revealed that the contractors, Ribade Company Limited, you know, it's a, a consortium of a sort mm. that uh, they formed. Uh, so uh, the lead contractor is the Italian firm which is not registered in Ghana, Mario Di Echa and Ricardo Di Echa. Uh, they are the leaders in this consortium. Di Simone and uh, Babisotti are the other companies. They have been working in Ghana. Clearly, because of the Waterville case, the Ferro Atlantic case, uh, they, they wanted to you know, circumvent parliamentary approval under Article 1815. So they asked them to form a JV and go get incorporated. But you see, they got incorporated 21st December 2020. And yet, the president cut the sword March 5th, 2020, and said that all was set, contracts have been awarded, construction is about to begin. The director, the executive director, Dr. Poku Mensah, told the media that contract awarded, all is set, construction will begin in April. Some way, somehow, I think they couldn't because of COVID and all that. But construction then resumed in November, according to Reverend Kusi Boatin, the records I have reviewed. He took the media around and said that, you see, construction has begun. And yet, the company gets incorporated 21st December 2020. We have also obtained the National Cathedral of Ghana Instruments of Incorporation. And we realize that, again, the deception, the lack of candor. I mean, can you imagine that the, 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 the most esteemed Bishop Dark Ward Mills, Bishop of the Lighthouse Group of Churches, Despite all of these publications on the website of the, the, the National Cathedral uh, of Ghana, I, I, I had a, a download from the website. You mm -hmm. see them advertising that Bishop Dak mm -hmm. is, a, is a member of the trustees. Dak Heward Mills. Dak Heward Mills. Uh, the Reverend Professor Sifas Omenyo is, is a member of the Board of Trustees. It turns out when we obtained this, the incorporation instruments, that they were not listed. They are not there. Then they eventually issued this statement, long winding statement about how Bishop Dag was traveling, brought his documents three years ago in 2019, but they are waiting for some appointment by the president to replace uh, Reverend Sifaso Menu, who is indisposed. That is why they, I mean, and you've been waiting for three years and you are misleading the world. It's so messy. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with Reverend Mensa Otabil. So, you see, this project has lacked candor. It's lacked sincerity. It's violated the Constitution, virtually every law, mm -hmm. you know, from the Procurement Act, the Public Financial Management Act, to the NLC Decree 357. Then finally, something. I'm going to reveal this for the first time. I found it interesting. Very interesting. I didn't know that. I'm sure many people didn't know. What's this? This week, I saw Gabi Ochidaku tweet that, uh, you know, iconic, highly celebrated architect decides to come to Ghana to help us. And instead of celebrating him, mm -mm. we are doing what we are doing to him. I discovered that he didn't just register his company recently. He didn't just come recently to help us. Apparently, from his incorporation instruments I have here from the Registrar General's Department, he registered Ajay Associates Ghana Limited on the 14th of August 2012. And it is revealing that from 2012 to 2016, when he registered this company with Alice Asafu Ajay as the other director, they were not winning all the contracts as we see now when suddenly the MPP comes to power in 2017. So what changed? Between 2012 and 2016, mm. President Mahama, we know, was doing so many projects. Mm -hmm. 
you but, know, but, even in my sector. But because of the profession, incorporating the company is yeah. not sufficient. Yeah. You need yes. to be licensed, like a lawyer. Yes, yes. I can be called to the bar in the England or in the US, but I can't practice in Ghana. You are right. You are right. You are, you are right. By NLC decree 357, supposed to have been licensed. And indeed, he was licensed only on the 26th of April this year, 2022. But remember that he set up the entity. There is another architect there, Alisa Safweje. But the fundamental question is, how come for four good years between 2012 and 2016, we are not aware of him winning all of these contracts. You know, if, if he's, he's that great and, uh, you know, he's suddenly appeared and all the architects we have in Ghana okay. can, ca cannot even compete. Yeah. You know, and then suddenly, between 2017, all he's right. winning all of this from Marine Drive to Agenda 111 to, and you know, Agenda 111, he was paid another 36 uh, million Ghana. So it looks like he doesn't go below 30 million. <laughs> you know, he, 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 when he, the bed calibre yeah. itself is 1.8 million dollars. Can you imagine? For design. It's, 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 unbelievable. it's unbelievable. Interesting. Um, well, Bryce Simmons raised a big concern about uh, that. And his concern was that in, if he were practicing in the UK, where he has his studios, he's not allowed to charge a percentage beyond 3.5 3. or so. And then if you were practicing in Ghana, he is not allowed to charge beyond 4% or so. Um, and even that, what we know in the practice, as Bryce Simon said quite eloquently, is that the higher the cost of the project, the lower the percentage that you are entitled. As a lawyer, I know that for a fact. And our rules and our scale of fees dictate it. If I am getting a, a contract for 10,000 CDs and my percentage is about, say, 5%, that same contract, if the price goes to about 20,000 CDs, my percentage will not remain 5%. It will go down, but I'll receive my reward, which will be equal compensation. So the question Bright raised I think it's important for all of us to think about how come that in this instance, this is so expensive, and yet the percentage that he gets on the total cost, according to the chief of staff, is 12%. 12 Bright 12.5%. Yes, 12.5%. Bright was actually saying 10%, uh, yeah. but it's, it's in fact, it's 12.5%. And Bright calculates that for all the projects that he's been handed, about six or more of them, if this is how he's going to be charging, then at the end, he will earn in excess of 300 million US dollars from us. Question is, how does that happen? And, and where does this happen? And something, if, if, uh, if, if I'll add to that briefly, mm. it will shock many people to realize that even the ABAJ-led Public Procurement Authority thought that the Chief of Staff was being excessive with her 12.5%. In the letter that we have intercepted, re responding to the chief of staff, dated 17 December 2018, the PPA requests of the presidency in paragraph three as follows. Office of the president is however requested to negotiate for a 10% trade discount on the contract sum prior to the award of the contract. The approved contract sum therefore should be 21 million three hundred and seventy five thousand five hundred and not twenty three point seven five million dollars even the ppa <laughs> thought that the chief of staff was being excessive mm. the office of the president it should have been the other way around interesting. office of the president rather interesting the president who okay so let's let's end. let's go to let's go to speak to uh kweku entry boy um is it fair for critics of the project to be projecting wrongdoing and being suspicious of corruption. When, for example, I had Dr. Poku Mensa here last week, and from his conversation, you can hear him admit that it does appear that they are planning as they move on because they don't seem to have a concrete plan. The plan is not cast in stone. So initially, there was no museum. They had to add a museum, and then the price shot up. Initially, for example, in 2018, yeah. the Attorney General goes to court and tells the, the Supreme Court 
that all we are going to do is to give land. The president had spoken about it in 2017 in his address on Independence Day. Then, moving from the court in 2018 to 2019, Ken Oforiata comes to parliament and says, we are not giving only land. We will also add seed money. Quantum, we don't know. Um, and you need to add even that. how to form the company. They give us advice from the attorney general. Uh, unfortunately, they are asking for the advice when they had already done the work. They had already incorporated the company. And they were asking whether they should use foundation and stuff. And the attorney general said, keep it this way. And don't use any foundation and things. Um, don't you get a sense that it is fair to be fair to them by saying that they didn't have the plan from the scratch and so they are thinking as they move along rather than suspect corruption and intentional wrongdoing on their part. Thank you, Samson. I will put it this way. Okay. Even after the Attorney General advised them that the Finance Ministry can legitimately donate money to the now state-owned non-profit organization, which suggests that something had already been done. He advised that they adhere strictly to Section 50 of the Public Financial Management Act, Act 921. What did they do? Even after that, in uh, May 2022, they go ahead, dip their hands into the state coffers yeah. and say, we are giving additional seed money. So for me, it shows a certain sense of we are determined to do it and we will do it even with the Attorney General advising us to do it according to the law. Because if you go to that section 50, what the law basically says is that you cannot issue a warrant for the co uh, a controller and accountant general to disperse money from the consolidated fund unless that particular fund has been provided for in an appropriation act. It means parliament has approved that expenditure before you can issue warrant for it to be disbursed. You have already given $25 million without going by the law without parliamentary approval, the attorney general tells you, make sure you go by this section 50, and yet you go ahead and disperse an additional seed money. So whilst I can understand the thrust of your question, their actions speak much, much louder than these words because they feel, or it seems, they can do what they are doing because there isn't going to be any consequences mm. for their actions. Because if you look at even that, I mean, uh, 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 Act 921, the sanctions for violating Section 50 is what? Maximum 3,000 cities fine. Really? 3,000 cities fine. That's all. Uh, the finance minister will be asked to pay, or, assuming or the, in the alternative, or in the alternative, person. or in an addition, there's a jail term for that. Mm -hmm. Six months. To two there's years. a jail term of two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but uh, you lawyers know that the option first for the judge will be to uh, 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 go for the fine. So really, it's three thousand. But even if the two years were going to be uh, 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 the sentence. Go back to uh, uh, um, section 96 of that same act. If an ordinary storekeeper who is procuring for the state commits certain infractions, the maximum sentence for that person will be five years. And in terms of fine, it's in the region of 24,000. So the minister who is supposed to actually administer this particular law gets off with 3,000 fine, whilst an ordinary person who contravenes this law will be asked to pay 24000 So these are not just, you know, accidental or, I mean, something they didn't know and they were just 
you know, planning as they go along. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. The, there's, and there's, there's, they there's, believe they can get away with it. There's one thing that I'm thinking about as you speak about that law. And look, let's not be fooled that all the time the law is made and is supposed to treat people equally. When you look at his law, he refers to and the sanction. A common, ordinary storekeeper will be looking to go to jail five years. But the places where they know the people who will offend will be within the ministry and those things. 3,000 cities fine, or between six months and two years of jail. You can't convince me that this was not deliberate. That is an ordinary person who will suffer more <laughs> than uh, these people. But, uh, Kweku, um, for example, people have been angry. But is it really the people in charge of the cathedral, the trustees? And, and some churches are sending me messages. They are not happy that Martin is saying that as for his church, the Catholic church, uh, they, are, they are representative. They are, their person was only handpicked and it doesn't represent the church. Mm. They are saying that, in fact, all the trustees were handpicked hand and they don't represent the churches. Okay. So we shouldn't give the impression that uh, if there's uh, someone from Pentecost, then it means it's Pentecost church that has blessed oh, <laughs> the okay. project. Okay. Right, so that's an explanation. Right. right. Um, uh, we are blaming these people, but are they to blame when we read about the the uh, procurement process, if the Procurement uh, Act, Section 72, uh, Section 72, uh, 5, B. you know, says, among others, that the procurement entity may select consultants by inviting proposals from a single consultant where there is, A, only one eligible consultant. Is it not possible that the people who chose this consultant felt that uh, they, he may not be the only person, but he's the only one we want? Then B, where there is an emergency, and then C, uh, when it's a follow-up assignment. You have given somebody a job they are doing, and maybe they have run short of some of the produ products they are using, so you, add, you, you single source for them. Um, why is it that it appears that the attention is on the secretariat and the trustees when they are not the ones doing the procurement? Okay, so you are a trustee and you are also a member of the board of directors of a registered company. You have a responsibility under law. And so you cannot so source your responsibility to the office of the president. By the way, I, I have a different perspective on this because from the conception of this cathedral up until the time of incorporation, at every material time, it remained a private project. So in December uh, 2018, when the public procurement authority purportedly gave approval for a private project being executed by the office of the president, I think it had no legal basis. The public procurement authority had no legal basis, even purporting to uh, grant that approval in the first place. But come back to your question. We have a saying in Akan that the elder that sits at home and watch children to eat python, when we are counting python eaters, that elder is also counted. These renowned men and women of God have watched, are they saying that, that if people were bringing drug money from a certain country in South America for the construction of the cathedral, they would just fold their arms and say they are trustees and board of directors and they don't care how the money was coming to them? Is that what they are telling us? Then what is their role as trustees and board of directors? So all the infractions that clearly have I mean, occasioned under the auspices of the office of the president, the trustees cannot excuse themselves from this. They have to take responsibility. But I want to touch on a couple of things going forward because, I mean, your guests have already spoken about all the That's issues, right. so there's no point. So you just preempted my, my next question. Go ahead. Yes. You know, 
it's only in Ghana where when we talk about or when religious leaders talk about seed money. It is money you sow, but they go and consume. <laughs> seed that is consumed. <laughs> we provide seed money to the cathedral and it's consumed. You go to church, they say, bring seed money for a project and it's consumed. Why are we not thinking of the real concept of seed? Where you sow it, it grows, it bears fruits, and then you can consume the fruits on whatever project that you're doing. Personally, I'm saying that let's decide we want to construct this project over a period of 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. They tell us that, oh, you will always have the poor around it. They, they misuse the words of Jesus by saying you will always have the poor. So if, if we are having difficult times and people are suffering, it doesn't matter. We can still spend the state money. Mm -hmm. But where is God going? Is God going anywhere? Jesus was about to die. And he said, let me get some balm, some comfort from this expensive fragrance whilst I'm facing my death. I am going away. The poor will be there. You have the opportunity to still take care of them once I'm gone. He didn't say that the eternal God who is going nowhere, you still have to be in a rush to spend money you don't have. You are borrowing 20 million here, 80 million there. You are going about cap in hand and you are spending that to uh, 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 build a cathedral for a God who is not running away, who is not going anywhere, who will be dead even after you have died and gone. So my thinking is, look, the other time the finance minister was saying, well, he is looking at the internal rate of return on the project. Can the, the, the secretary share with us the cash flow projections based on which the finance minister was looking at those internal rate of returns? Because I would say that when you are in a crisis and you want to be able to support a project, what you need to look at is the payback period. How quickly are you going to get your returns so you can reinvest it or use part of the returns to support the suffering people whilst you execute the project? When he was in parliament uh, uh, this week, he mentioned that or the Obatampa, they budgeted for 1.5 billion, but they could only disperse 500 million which again shows you the shortfall in our revenue mobilization, for which reason you can't be spending $400 million uh, uh, dollars on a project like this. But he said they have spent that, I mean, part of that $500 million on the poultry industry and other industries as import substitution. And that, I mean, brought something to mind. I've done some work on po the poultry industry, for instance. And with $2.5 million, you can set up a poultry processing factory that also provides funds for outgrower farmers. And it's a, it's a whole industry in itself. So that $25 million that we spent and consumed, even though it was supposed to be seed money, could have set up 10 of these factories. And each of these factories can produce annually $27 million worth of chicken. Koku, you are talking, so Koku, you are talking about a government. To... You are talking about a government that believes in industrialization, and it's already doing the one D one F project. It's doing the one village one dam project. Okay. So, you know, it's doing things, and this is to add sort uh, of. Something. What I'm, what, what I'm saying to you is that that seed money. If we're thinking about it as really, you would think about seed. You could invest that 25 million and annually it will give you chicken worth of 270 million dollars which is half our poultry imports per year but the key thing is that assuming you even decide to only reinvest 75 percent of the profits from each of those factories over a period of 10 years you will be adding close to $300 million to the construction uh, 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 finance. Kweku, you are a Christian. And that is how we should Kweku, think about it. Kweku, you are a Christian, and in church, when you hear seed money, you know that the definition is not what you are now trying to uh, sort of innovate around it. The seed money is that you, out of your heart, uh, maybe sometimes it's first fruits, you go and give it, and you don't expect that that seed money will multiply and come back to you. You expect, you expect that 
God will bless you because you have given it. It is not the expectation that it will be invested um, so that you will reap from it. So what, I'm, what, I'm, so what I'm saying is that in addition to all that uh, Honorable Ablaqua has said, accountability and everything in, in getting us to buy in, if you're going to construct this cathedral over 10, 15 year period, don't expect that it is going to be financed by the taxpayer all these 400 million we can agree that okay let's give another 25 million dollars as seed money but let's look at it as seed invest it and use the proceeds to construct the cathedral over that period of time instead of expecting that we will foot all 400 million we could as a state provide additional 25 or 50 million and that is it the rest has to be self-financing that the, is the only way personally I'll, 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 the, I'll buy into the, this project. The, the, people, the people in government don't think the way you do. If you have listened to, say, MPP spokespersons, uh, some of whom initially, uh, I just stopped arguing with them because they kept saying the Washington Cathedral <laughs> it belongs to the state. The state built it. You tell them everything, go check the records. It's not built by the state and it's not managed by the state. And they kept saying that. Well, um, haven't you heard them, including, is it their women's organizer, Say, when you say this was a personal or private pledge of the president, and so he shouldn't use uh, public money, what money do you want him to use? They ask you the question. Free SHS, was it not the, pres the president's own personal promise and uh, pledge? He's using state money to do it, and he's benefiting all of us. So as far as they are concerned, this is how you should look at the issue. Okay, Samson. I will reply them this way. You know, we have three arms of government. The executive headed by the president, the legislature headed by the speaker, and then the judiciary headed by the chief justice. So we wake up tomorrow morning and um, Speaker Bagbin tells us that, well, when I, st I started off as a politician, I went to my Catholic church in Calio and prayed and promised that if I succeed as a legislator, I'll come back and build St. Alban Basilica in Kaliu. But he's the Speaker of Parliament, the head of the legislature. He knows a lot of people within the system. And so he decides that, okay, for the 2022 budget that was uh, uh, allocated to Parliament through the Appropriation Act, he's going to dis dip his hand together with the people who collaborate with him and go and build St. Alban Basilica in Kaliu. Are we saying that will be okay? So, you, so, so you say the way forward is? The way forward is let, let them come clean, be accountable to the people of Ghana, show every peso, every city that has been spent so far, and every cost that has been incurred, even if we are yet to pay, and then decide that we are going to construct this cathedral over a longer period, I say 10 to 15 years. And Ghana, the taxpayer, will only contribute seed money that will be invested so that the project becomes self-sustaining. Not that every year we have to budget 50 million or 100 million to, 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 to construct this cathedral. So that if it is 400 million, if it is 400 million dollars, how much of your tax money would you want as contribution to this seed money? For me, based on the analysis I've done, maximum $50 million. And if they invest that today in the projects I've told you about, which the minister also mentioned, I can assure you over 10 to 15 years, we will be able to generate $485 million that will go into the construction of this cathedral. Okay. We don't need to burden the taxpayer, especially at this time when everything is so difficult for ordinary people. The president says the taxpayer will not be burdened. That's the assurance he gives you. Um, so thank you very much. Kweku Enchi Bwesiakon wants to be referred only as uh, a Ghanaian citizen. Um, so that's an ordinary Ghanaian. Of course, you can call him, uh, what do we call them? Is it middle class, <laughs> you know, um, view uh, on this matter? And uh, Jacob, I'm going to John Kuma 
and I intentionally kept him for last so that we hear all of you and we'll be able to respond to you appropriately. But once we are done with that, I'll come back to uh, Okujeto Ablakwa. The Attorney General appears to raise very germane issues about some of the things that you have written this week about him as far as the project is concerned. And I think that when you read his letter carefully, you will agree with him that you can concede to a certain point that um, you didn't uh, give the accurate picture. So we'll come to that. He's seeking an apology and a retraction. Otherwise, he may think about suing you. Um, Jacob Oseyeboa says, Samson, this man, Kweku Enchibwe Seako, is deep in his analysis. I salute him. Um, now, this is from a gentleman at the presidency. Um, he works there, uh, so we pay him. He says, I, I wish this is not the thinking of the entire presidency. He says, the Catholic Church hasn't signed up, doesn't mean, doesn't change anything. Other churches have signed up. Even the Grand uh, Mufti of Ghana, Sheikh Dr. Osman Nuhu Sharabutu, is fully in support and has contributed. I think he gave some 50,000 cities mm. to it. Mm. It will be built to the glory of God. It didn't Samuel, know the government money. Samuel, Brian, uh, Brian. Brian Boabing. Uh, John, first of all, is this how the government is thinking? Uh, we kept he hearing the hashtag, uh, whether you like it or not, it will be built. Mm -hmm. um, people are not mostly, if you listen to Seo Kujeto, if you listen to Martin Pebu, if you listen to Kweku um, Nchubu Esiako this morning, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure I've heard anybody say we, we shouldn't build a cathedral. What I'm hearing is accountability, transparency, and being prudent, particularly at a time when we know that we are in hardship and that we may be getting into issues of hunger if we are not careful. Yeah, something. Thank you. Um, especially a good morning to you. Uh, something, you know, we were classmates. In the studio, I have a classmate, I have a senior and a junior. <laughs> uh, senior Martin Pebu was our senior, and uh, I greet him a lot. You know, he was one person that you could always go to for advice. He's never changed. I'm happy he's kept his knowledge for the country. Senior Martin, I greet you. Good and, morning. and of course, Honorable Ablaka was behind us, but uh, he went ahead of us into parliament. He's always been a hardcore politician. That's right. And my greetings to Kwebu and Chibu for his insightful contribution. You know, I remember uh, the days when uh, we're all seeking political office in, on campus and Okujeto was running later to seek for nukes. <laughs> <laughs> and all our little fights with our Manebuama. You remember those ones? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> all right. Yes. All right. Epo, epo okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So special right. greetings to everybody. Mm. Um, something, what I would say is that government will respond to concerns being raised on the National Cathedral. And, and we take it very seriously. And, and at the proper time, all the various issues will be addressed. Uh, but I will still take the opportunity to address one or two things. First of all, uh, I mean, I listened to Kweku who was not uh, in agreement with the uh, explanation that, well, Jesus said the poor will still be with us, and so there's no appropriate time to do uh, things that have to do with investment in the kingdom of God. Uh, but you see, when it comes to cost, which I have listened to, I'll, I'll address the main issues of cost. I want to start with a certain biblical approach to the issue of the cathedral. Uh, and I would want us to look at Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 24, where David, there was a plague. I don't know if you want to read it, but um, David needed to atone and, and make a sacrifice to God and uh, in order to pacify for the um, calamity to be taken away from Israel. Mm -hmm. And one Jebusite called Aruna said he has a threshing floor which he will give for free. Uh, and so David could, and David should take that and do the sacrifice to God. If you read Second Samuel chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-four, uh, David categorically says that 
he will never take a free gift and sacrifice it to God. And any sacrifices he is making to God must cost him so that God can see the essence of the sacrifice. I'm just saying this to um, uh, bring into perspective the cost that many people say is costing us, is costing us. Uh, as the foundation of all sacrifices that men make to God. Uh, if you genuinely want to uh, do something for God, don't be thinking about free, free, uh, I mean, free gifts to God doesn't attract uh, much of his blessings. And the foundation of that is in 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. But this is not to say uh, the concerns they are raising is out of place. Now, uh, back to uh, uh, issues of principles and values. Uh, I mean, one thing I don't question or disagree with people is efficiency of our expenditures and value for money. And when people want to seek accountability, I am on all fours with all concerns that has to do with efficiency of our expenditures. Why are we going to spend 200 million or 300 million when we could do for less? If there is substance in that, I think we can easily look at that and reshape it and so that at the end of the day, we achieve what we cannot do. Uh, we achieve the objective in our difficult circumstances. So uh, the issues that are being raised about costings, and, and let me put on record, I have not seen any $400 million anywhere. I've seen lots of figures. People are talking about $450 million, $500 million. Uh, I have not seen those figures. And something, uh, like I said, we in the right time, uh, and I honestly, we are in government, will respond to these concerns, will continue to engage. We want to be as prudent as possible and be measured and accountable in, in all the issues that has to do with the National Cathedral. And so um, we, we are going to look at those issues and come up with the appropriate responses that are correct because there's so much propaganda. Of course, the, 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 the difficult times makes it very emotional when you want to talk about issues like National Cathedral and its cost to us as a country. So people are taking advantage to also throw in all kinds of things, including lies. I just recently heard that we paid $50,000 to Sonny Badu for his appearance on, uh, I think, one of the fundraising events or engagement of the National Cathedral, which turned out to be false. I mean, he's come out to deny it. His criteria has denied it. I mean, there's no basis for such claims and lies. And I believe people are deliberately doing these things to cause disaffection for the National Cathedral. Um, I would want to encourage all of us citizens as Ghanaians to never give up, especially the Christians who see value in the National Cathedral. This is not a time to run away because somebody has raised concerns. Those concerns will be addressed. Let's stay resolute in our belief that what we are doing is something that is important, is something of value to our country, is something that we have thought through, that it's a long-term in investment to our country that will be recorded. I will even want to address the uh, corpus concerns that he sees that uh, 25 million investment in poetry will bring 480 million. Uh, well, uh, he, 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 I want to tell him that whatever investment we'll do in the National Cathedral will equally bring us a very good returns. And, and, and like the Côte d'Ivoire one that even the Pope intervened. Today, as we speak, check the revenues that the Basilica in Côte d'Ivoire is, is bringing to the country and it's being recovered, it's even becoming more profitable. So uh, we understand that these things are going to cost us, but it is not a cost that's in vain. It's a cost that should be seen, uh, even if you don't want to use your spiritual eyes as an argument, you should see it in an economic uh, 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 significance in terms of its positive investment returns to our country and what it represents for us as a country. And I believe that this uh, National Cathedral is going to promote religious tourism. It, 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 like the finance minister has already stated, if you look at the internal rate of returns, eventually we are going to benefit so much from it. So you can even look at it in terms of other investment like roads or social infrastructures that we put up 
when we were putting up the national uh, the national theatre, this same arguments came up. But today, we all see the importance and benefits of the national cathedral that is continuing to serve our country. It is the same thing that I think that uh, we should also see the economic importance and significance of the national cathedral. But the legitimate concerns that have been raised, these are matters that government will not rubbish. We will take serious look at them and at the appropriate time address them so that we can have that collective uh, unity to pursue such a noble objective for our country. So, so how, do you, how do you explain and how do you seek to resolve the, the, the breach even of the Attorney General's advice to, to proceed with funding in compliance with the PMF Act that Kweku uh, Entigwe uh, Shako talks about? Because there must be an appropriation act. You don't uh, go ahead and you know, pay without proper warrants. Okay. We have done everything legal. All our actions as government has been done within the law. Every funds that have been paid to the National Cathedral from coffers of government was done through the appropriate appropriation, including the limitations within the PFM Act. So we have not gone beyond any advice of the, uh, the Attorney General. The issue about the Office of President paying to Ajay has been explained that it came out of the appropriation allocation to the office of president, which has been approved by parliament. So uh, under the goods and services of the office of president, this has been approved by parliament. So we insist that everything we have done has been done within the law. Yes, we may disagree in terms of priority that some people think some things are more important than others, especially on the issue of the president promises of the state and the scenario gave about the speaker. The speaker represents the legislative arm of government. If he goes to make some, if he goes to make a promise and is able to convince the the parliamentary service board to invest part of their budget into expenditure, it will represent a parliamentary decision. Unfortunately, you may not agree, but that is what the law is. So the example you gave, if Honorable Babin as a speaker today goes to his hometown and he's make, he makes a pledge and is able to come back to convince the parliamentary service board, it will form part of their uh, expenditures. So there's nothing wrong with that. If the president comes to my village in Ejuso, I'm today speaking to you from Kokobra in Ejuso right now. If he comes here and he promises to do a school project for us or build a church for us or do our roads for us. Yes, it's his personal pledge, uh, pledge, but that pledge is also a pledge of the state. And he, we, don't, we will not expect His Excellency the President to use his personal pocket money to come and fix that, unless he says, I am personally going to build it for you. So um, let's not dissociate Mm. But, 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 but that's exactly promises. but that's that's exactly what we were told. Yeah, that's what the president said. That we are going to give land initially, just land, and we told the Supreme Court that it's just land. <clears throat> the Supreme Court said, if that is it, then why why is somebody wanting to scuttle the project? After all, the state is not funding it. And then Ken came, you know, your boss came and said. We are going to give the land and give seed money. Um, do you think it is fair to be asking how much of my tax will constitute the seed money? I've been asking that question. I don't have an answer. Okay, something. Uh, I have also looked at that uh, 2019 budget, what exactly the Minister of Finance said. Um, and, and to understand him, we must always ask ourselves, who are the beneficial owners of the facility if it's eventually completed? Is it going to be a property of the state? Or some entity is going to own it? And it has never been in doubt from the one that this is going to be a 100% state of Ghana property. So if you are going to build a property for the state, but the mode of construction or the mode of fundraising, in order 
not to put burden on the taxpayer. You say that let me extend the mobilization to include the private sector and the Christian community. It does not take away our basic responsibility as beneficial owners to put it up. And we never have read the document. Every, it was never stated anywhere that government was not going to contribute to the construction and completion of the project. Mm. So you let's keep, let's keep to this, John. Let's, John, let's keep to no. this. Where the minister no. says, we are providing <laughs> land and seed money for the preparatory stage or preparatory phase. Where does the when does the where does or when does the preparatory phase end? And how much of my money will be involved? My MP doesn't know. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so no, uh, something I've told you the concerns will be addressed. Maybe we have to do more in terms of giving out information. But I just want us to engage from the point of view that there's nothing to hide. And remember, we are talking about 2019 when we were still at the preparatory stage of the National Cathedral. Budgets are done annually. So in that particular year, our contribution in terms of the budget was looking at the land, the secretariat, and, and seed money. Okay. But we said that we were going to partner with the private sector to raise more financing as we move on to be able to complete the project. So this thing has been clear from day one. We never said the fact that we said we will part, we'll partner with others doesn't take our, our, our ultimate responsibility. And in fact, the, the, as citizens, uh, not as owners, as beneficial owners of the property from being uh, 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 responsible for its uh, financing, except that we needed to spread it. Uh, and it also promotes this uh, sense of ownership because at the end of the day, when you have fully built the National Cathedral, um, you, you want the Christian community to own it. Mm. So allowing them to also contribute in this building is also promoting a sense of participation and ownership on the project. Okay. So uh, and, we yeah. have not hidden mm. any information from the public. We will continue to be transparent. We have heard the other concerns that have been raised and at the appropriate time, we are going to respond to all of them. Okay. Uh, uh, obviously, unfortunately, uh, I think there's a certain groundswell of public opinion that doesn't, you know, confirm that there's been transparency and accountability so far. But you are assuring that you're going to do that. Uh, the reference to the $400 million that mm. it is getting to, uh, this is what Bryce Simmons uh, posted, uh, tweeted. He says mm -hmm. that a few months ago, the government of Ghana quietly renegotiated contract sums on the National Cathedral to a whopping $400 million after significant confusion and rancor over earlier design work between builders G. Uh, Echa and architects um, Ajay and Associates. Now, he goes to the, uh, you know, those who are in charge of the business and finds out what they are telling the world what they have done. And he found out, the question was, what are the most significant cases or transactions that your legal team has recently been involved in? And this is the team that is uh, supposed to be working for these contractors. And their answer is, our legal team has just been able to finalize a 400 million contract for the project of a cathedral in Ghana. We secured a 200 uh, euro deal for the new headquarters of the European Investment Bank in Luxembourg. The Razani, the Echcha legal team, has also been involved in the final arbitration hearing against a state of the Gulf for a total of 300 million. So if uh, Bright doesn't have <laughs> the thing correct, mm -hmm. then who do we blame? It is the lawyers uh, that are involved in working for the, uh, if you like it, those who are supposed to be working on the project. Let me share a few messages with you here and then uh, take uh, just a few comments. I need to have to go for a break, but I said that I'll go to Okujeto. My guests are also saying they want to say just a minute or so. Um, 
So Koja Sante is asking, um, John, where is the financial analysis that shows a positive rate of return? What is this craziness uh, that you are talking about? That the president can make personal promise and we can use state resources to pay? Is that what people were, were taught in school? And by the way, um, did he not make any promise like this during his campaign for people to interrogate? Uh, so, so there are people who are asking, we can't find this in your manifesto to say that was a social contract with anybody. Then Kojo Yansen says that free SHS was not a personal pledge of the president. It is a mandate in our constitution. That is true. Uh, actually, the NDC says it started it in a gradual manner. You disagree with that approach. The NPP said in their manifesto that they will abide by the constitutional dictate. So that was a promise to the people by voting for the NPP. The people accepted that their money be used to fulfill that promise. How does this compare to the personal debt a man incurred with God? while he was not president, okay? Where does he get the, the girl to dip his hands into our money to fulfill his personal fantasy? Oh, and by the way, even free SHS money is accounted for, at least through our representatives in parliament. Um, Kakra, uh, Samoa says that... Um, John, can you tell us whether you know of any church building anywhere in the world that was built for economic reasons? This is rank blasphemy, and I find it extremely unfortunate. Uh, Yakubu Ibn Chambas says, Nobody should be seen against the building of the cathedral, especially devout Christians. The, Christ the country stands to gain spiritually if this cathedral is built. The president is the head of a portion of the earth called Ghana. Uh, he's sending more messages, so he's disrupting it. Uh, a portion of the earth called Ghana and must certainly have some tete-a-tete with God. However, probity and accountability and value for money must not be relegated to the background, especially when public funds are involved. The project has been delivered out to people to execute and therefore no middleman should thwart the collective dream of the president and the citizens. Collective dream of the presidents and citizens. Uh, are you sure about what you're saying? All right. Um, so these are the responses that are coming to you, John. But uh, you wanted to say something briefly. I need to go for a break because we must come to look about the accounting for the COVID-19 funds. Is the minority just raising unnecessary, you know, as it were, issues just to make the government bad? Yes, what did you want to respond to? So, my good brother, the Honorable John Kuma, knows that when the finance minister said in parliament on the 15th of November, 2018, I have a speech here, paragraph 157, that Mr. Speaker, the president is determined that the building of the National Cathedral will not put undue financial burdens on the state. He's therefore proposing a partnership between the state and the Ghanaian Christian community. Mr. Speaker, the state is facilitating the process by providing land, secretariat, and seed money for the preparatory phase. That's all they said in the 2019 budget. And in that debate on the 28th of November 2018, we pointed it out to them. I have the hands up here. And quote quickly, Mr. Speaker, I've reviewed the budget statement itself, and there is no statement whatsoever which relates to the National Cathedral. In other words, there has been no request for any estimate to be approved by this House for its const construction. That is Dr. Yeni speaking at column 2893. So for the 2019 budget, there was no allocation. 2020 budget, the year they withdrew the 142.7 million, they didn't talk about National Cathedral at all. They withdrew 142.7 million from the consolidated fund in flagrant violation of Article 178. It was not in the, in the budget, no parliamentary approval. Then 2021, that's the year they began paying 
said David Ajay, we have seen the uh, payment instructions from the office of the president, the documents we intercepted. 32 million Ghana cities. It's not in the 2021 budget. Mm. <laughs> John Kuman knows that. You can't say something three years ago, say, oh, we'll be doing some partnership, we'll be doing some seed money, and then in perpetuity, year after year after year, you keep withdrawing funds illegally. Mm. I mean, what kind of lawlessness is that? Right. Then 2022, mm. when they withdrew 25 million Ghana cities from the consolidated fund, check the 2022 budget. There is no allocation, no line item. So he cannot say that because in 2018, when you were presenting the 2019 budget, you indicated that there will be some seed money. So it gives you the license to withdraw 142.7 million in 2021, 32 million in 2022, 25 million in, 20, in, in, in 2021, and 30, uh, 25 million in 2022. It doesn't give you that license. Okay, you, but you, you, you uh, cannot uh, do that. I've, and and, and I've, let, I've me, let me let me let I me mean, let me say finally that you see, in the budget approval process, mm. every year when they come to parliament to seek approval for the ensuing year, say you come to parliament this year for budgetary approval for 2023, you must necessarily account for how you spent the money we gave you. How come that they concealed all of this expenditure from us? In their report, he says that Office of the President, Goods and Services. This is the first time I'm hearing that an infrastructure project, you put it under Goods and Services. Infrastructure project is put under CAPEX. That's where infrastructure projects belong, under capital expenditure. Nevertheless, if you go through all the reports they brought to Parliament from the Office of the President, mm. they never accounted okay. for this expenditure, right. not a word. Mm. And I will appeal to him that he should go and see what has happened to uh, President Ufe uh, mm. uh, cathedral, which is now called the Basilica in the Bush. It's not true that it's booming and it's bringing returns in, uh, in Ivory no, Coast I, I think it, it is COVID that has affected the tourism but, there. Yeah, but even before then. From what we read recently, it's covered. Yes, but even right. before then, they, they couldn't meet their, their, their targets. Yes, but what do you say? Attorney General, has he raised germane issues or he has not? Your allegations of conflict of interest against uh, him, and he issued a statement clearly stating to you that um, you, you, got, you got things wrong. You were referring to him at a time that uh, you, you claim he was on uh, PP or whatever. He was not even there, the, the date of his appointment and all of that, when he was deputy, all of that, you, met, you mix things up. Um, is, there, is there not opportunity for you to make a frank concession that you got some of these not at all. timelines have, wrong, have, at least? I have, I have already dared him to go to court. I'm ready to meet him there. Look, I know too much about this project, and they shouldn't push us. I know just too much. Does he think there was only one approval? There were many approvals even for Sir David Ajay, even for the contractors, where he was secretary to the National Cathedral of Ghana and served on the PPA board. And what does he say? Look, we have raised fundamental issues, germane issues. Look at the abuse of Section 40 and Section 72.5 of the, of the Public Procurement Act. What does he say to that? Look at, you are the government's principal legal advisor. Finance minister is withdrawing copious amounts of money from the consolidated fund without parliamentary approval. What does he say to that? And he thinks that we can be intimidated, we can be harassed. He should proceed to court. I'm ready to meet him there. I know too much about this project. And as I've said, as for this National Cathedral project, you, some you people see, will You see, when you, say, when you say you dare, when you say you dare somebody to jail. go to court, you know, in court, you are, you are talking about other matters, but he's talking directly about what you have said. And he says that the claims you talk about that he was secretary uh, to the to the National Cathedral. He, he is secretary. And then, yes, he doesn't dispute that. And that he was, uh, he, and he's secretary because it's a statutory thing and the office must do it because this entity is a, is a state entity. And, and that I'm not sure. He, at the he, time he was deputy. At the time he, he served on the... the he served on the board of the PPA, which approved Ajay's irregular soul sourcing contract. He's saying that this is not correct. He says, one, appro approval of an application to single source Messrs. Sir David Ajay and Associate was granted by the Public Procurement Authority on 13 December 2018. The National Cathedral of Ghana was incorporated as a company limited by guarantee that's non-profit making entity on the 18th of July 
2019. I'm telling you, why Wait, are you worrying? 2019. I'm you that that is then he the says approval. quite clearly, at the time of the approval by the PPA, on whose governing board I served in my former capacity as Deputy Attorney General, no company known as the National Cathedral of Ghana had been formed for me to be a secretary of or have any purported interest in, uh, in to declare. You are saying he should have declared. I could not have had a so-called interest in a non-existent company if Ms. Okujetra Blackwa had cared to read or examine the relevant documents well, as he should have, this plain fact would not have been lost on him. Then he comes to say other things. You, you, you should admit to this. There's nothing to admit to. I know what I know, and I'm, I'm ready for the court. Going matter. to court is not pleasant, I'm telling you. So why are you worried? I want to be there. Why are you? I, I, I'm happy about Except the invitation. That I'll say the AG shouldn't take it personal. I'm okay, excited about take the invitation. It's public office. This yes. is, those mm. are the hazards of the job. Okay, so there's no need to go to court. You should focus mm. on delivering the goods for us as citizens. You should take mm. this one more or less. Uh, we, we, have been, we have been taking off. <laughs> uh, <laughs>